you can get paid for watching TikTok. I know it sounds dumb or like some get rich quick scheme, but it's not. It's actually more of a get rich slow scheme. The three of us do it all the time. You, you don't need to buy a course. You don't need to sell products. You don't need to form a pyramid. You just need to pay attention. Last week, Chris saw a product that was trending on TikTok. He checked the Google Trends chart. It was parabolic. He determined it was a publicly traded company and could be the perfect social arb trade. He tweeted on X about it, showing the Google Trends chart. He offered to buy the product for the first person who could guess what it is. Tons of smart guesses. We'll talk about some of those too. Today on Dumb Money, we reveal the product and the company and the stock and tell you if he once again got paid for watching TikTok. This is Dumb Money Live. Hey there, Dave here along with Chris and Jordan. We are Dumb Money. Welcome to Dumb Money Live. Today is all about the power of the TikTok algorithm, but we first have to appease the almighty streaming algorithm. If you're watching on YouTube right now, take a second, smash a like. Uh, tell us, if you're watching live, tell us where you're watching from in the live chat. And if you're watching the replay or listening to the podcast or, or on X or Facebook or wherever, they all have a way to like this. So do us a favor, find that button, smash it, like all the things, do all the things. Uh, oh, by the way, we are less than 2,300 subscribers away from hitting 100K on YouTube. If you are not subscribed, you are missing out. YouTube.com slash dumb money live. Subscribe. It's quick. It's easy. It's free. Chris Jordan. It is a good old fashioned social arb trade today. Uh, it, they don't. They don't get clean like this. You found this, Chris. So why don't you tell us what it is? Dave, first, I think I need to remind you guys about my credibility when it comes to country and and and, and Western culture. Okay, so <laughs> wait. I will be attending my tenth Hank Williams Jr. concert this weekend in Oklahoma, okay? Jordan, you probably don't know this about me, but there was a time in my life, Dave knows this, when I wore nothing but cowboy boots, Western, like, apparel, Wrangler jeans, belt buckles that were the size of your head. Do you remember me back then, Dave? Do you remember I try to. I try to forget it. Like, literally, I try to just put that out of my mind. Like, you were a <laughs> cowboy. You were a poser cowboy living in the rich part of town driving a broken down jeep but you had the most ridiculous boots that were never uh, these, these things looked like you bought them th from a thrift store and they had to be at least 20 years old because you'd never stepped foot in the soil with these things i'm sure you, you I... just wore them to social events hey i might have grown up on long island <laughs> but I moved to Texas, and I'm Texas now. now I, I, I've, outgrown, I've outgrown that phase. But <laughs> this insight is really interesting. So the company is Contour Brands, and they own basically two brands. They own Wrangler Jeans, and they own Lee Jeans, okay? Most of what they sell is denim. Yep. But here's what's really interesting. We talked about Coastal Cowgirl popping earlier this summer. All right. Are we unfortunately I, have... I I missed most of that one? <laughs> are, are are we going to have just a cowgirl winner now? Because three <laughs> of the top five songs on Billboard are country songs. Top 100 Billboard songs. Three of the top five are country. Okay. It cost $1,000 to buy nosebleed seats to Morgan Wallen right now. I know that because we're trying to get seats for my son, and I refuse to pay that much. I wouldn't pay for Taylor Swift. I'm not paying it for Morgan Wallen. That's now, right. He's following right in your footsteps of going all in on country. Yes. Well, I would pay it for Taylor Swift, but definitely not Morgan Wallen. Well, well, here's what's interesting. Before we get into the specific social arb inside of this trade, which might or might not even be impactful, this company, Contour Brands, which owns Wrangler, Wrangler has two brand ambassadors, okay? Cody Johnson and Lainey Wilson. Lainey Wilson's a female country uh, singer. She had two of the top 10 songs on the country billboard this summer, which is really phenomenal. I don't think that's happened in like over a decade that you have a female artist with two. And they just happen to have two of these huge country stars as their brand ambassadors right now. They also just signed a sponsor deal for the Dallas Cowboys at AT&T Stadium. 
Um, there's a lot of stuff happening at this company that I want to talk about that I discovered through my research that I think is really intriguing. Okay. But the, the insight that led me to contour brands was a viral TikTok trend for the Wrangler tote bag. And if anyone out there pulls up a Google search chart on Wrangler bag uh, for the past five years, you will see just how phenomenal uh, the search traffic has accelerated for this thing over the past few months. Now, yeah, here, here is the uh, tweet that you put out a few days ago, Chris. And you're right. It's absolutely parabolic. You don't see, you don't see, uh, but you don't see this. But why would anyone have searched for Wrangler bag before the Wrangler bag even existed? Well, well, the thing is, they didn't. It just kind of went viral naturally because people on TikTok, mainly females, exclusively females, um, started going nuts for this bag. If you if you just Google the bag, Wrangler tote bag, it's actually a really cool bag. I was shocked when I showed my wife, and she was like, "That's actually kind of a cool kind of a cool bag." Um, it's sixty bucks. It's not it's not expensive at all. Um, it just happens to be really on trend and really approachable for most consumers. And it went viral, I think, in part because this is the season for TikTok shop. For years, TikTok creators have had virtually no way to make any money. And all of a sudden, they now have a way to make money on TikTok. And so many of these creators, especially small female creators, right, a lot of them are rural saw this bag, love the bag, and they're promoting it via TikTok shop. And that's a bigger trend, probably its own episode that we need to have to talk about because I think TikTok shop just might be one of the most insightful places in the world to discover trending products, trending brands that could have a meaningful impact on publicly traded companies. So it's something that we're going to keep a really close eye on going forward. But the question we need to answer for Contour Brands is can this one bag that has gone super viral, and let me tell you something, I went to Cavender's Boots, okay? I interviewed the managers and the store reps, and they told me that they get a shipment of about six of these things every two weeks, and they are sold out in an hour. They told me that their phone is ringing all day with people asking them, do you have the Wrangler bag? Do you have the Wrangler bag? And they literally put the bag when it comes in on top of a shelf so they can see it from the front desk so they can tell people on the phone if they do or don't have this bag. <laughs> so this is real. This is happening. This is actually a super hot bag. In fact, there's a single TikTok shop uh, account on TikTok that has sold, I think, $2.3 million worth of these bags in the last few months. I think it's called Top Planet. I sent you guys that text. But even if they're selling millions and millions of dollars of these bags, can it move the needle for a company that does billions of dollars of sales, primarily Wrangler and Lee Jeans? That's what they sell, yeah. right, guys? And here's, right. here's what you got to think about uh... Wrangler and Lee Jeans is that they are in Walmart, right? And so they've got huge push through of inventory through some of these major, major brands like Walmart. And so that's a, that's a lot to compete with. I do love this bag. Uh, mainly because it's affordable right now. And, you know, with inflation kicking in and, um, you know, you get a bag like this that goes viral and it's affordable. I mean, it's going to, uh, obviously it's selling through. I mean, it, it's so, it's so my question though, fire. is how many potential, how many, if they're only getting six at the local store, how many yeah. stores are there that sell this? Multiply that by the six that they're being allocated. Is it enough to actually move the needle for a mega company like, uh, contour that has two thirds of their revenue coming from Wrangler, but the bag division is probably small. They probably didn't make enough of these anticipating a viral TikTok sensation. So it's almost like you get lucky if you get one and you, you enjoy it, but is this really enough to move the needle for the stock? Great question, Dave. The good news is that the bag started to go viral earlier in the summer cooled off a little bit now it's going viral heavier than ever i think in part because of tiktok shop and we're going into the critical holiday season so the question is 
was Contour Brands able to catch up on manufacturing to meet the demand for this bag? I think they are likely to primarily sell this bag through their e-commerce channels and not have to pay, you know, distributors and retailers like Cavender's Boots and Western Warehouse. Is Western Warehouse even a thing? Do they even exist, Jordan, still? Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. That well, like... I mean, the biggest, so the biggest public one is Boot Barn, right? Boot, so Boot Barn. Boot Barn but Western yeah. Warehouse is the one with the best jingle. Do you guys remember that from the, from the 90s? <laughs> Got a ranch yes. in downtown Dallas. So buy diamonds by the ton. Chase cuties in my Cadillac. Drill oil wells just for fun. But when it comes Dude, to I love West, West, that, that was what I was going through my West. Western Go stage, heel. Dave. That I would live at Western Warehouse. I got all my belt buckles from there, dude. I got my elephant boots. Those are the boots you're talking about. The elephant one. That was. I feel bad about that now. Like I, I don't. I can't believe I you were wearing elephant. You're, you I just know, got canceled. Do you realize that you canceled. just got canceled? <laughs> I feel uh, terrible are, just, just saying just it. Give, give you an idea. There are 68 stores within 15 miles of your house. Just to give you an idea geographically, but we're in the South, so I think Wrangler is going to have more stores. That's not Wrangler-specific stores. That's in their store locator, places that sell Wrangler products. So if I if I just try to figure out which of these sell bags, is it is it a, is it a needle mover? I don't think, oh, so just so you know, Dave, they can't keep it in stock. I don't think it's an actual needle mover for the company because I don't believe they will be able to produce enough of them. But the number of people that are hearing about Wrangler, I actually saw TikToks where people were trying to explain what the Wrangler brand was. Is it high quality? Is it low quality? Because most people just don't have Wrangler on their radar, okay? And I think this is going to potentially drive a large number of new customers just to their website to check out the brand. Now, do 5 or 10% of those people stick around and maybe pick up something else that they found? You know, maybe they pick up some new customers because of this. I know that Wrangler is trying to diversify themselves outside of Den denim. That is a big initiative for both them and Lee Jeans. So it's actually kind of genius. They've been trialing these new products. This is part of their strategy, and it's obviously working. But the deeper I got into my research into Wrangler and Lee Jeans, the more excited I got, and not because of the Wrangler tote bag. So... In addition to them being very kind of on trend with the coastal cowgirl and country music just popping right now, like the whole world is loving country music right now. Also, this company, ready for this? Only 12% of their revenue comes from D2C, direct to consumer. Only 21% of their revenue comes from international. Like everything else that is country and Western, these guys are like 10 years behind the times. We have seen every single retail brand that we love grow exponentially over the last decade by m moving their business, transitioning their business to D to C, which is meaningfully more profitable, has much higher margins. We've seen these companies aggressively move overseas, international, grow in China. And there is still so much runway left for Contour Browns, brands, for Lee Jeans, for Wrangler, to go international, to grow, to go D to C, improve their margins. That's what I love most about this company. I ended up buying this company, Contour Brands, and a very small part of that decision had anything to do with this trending product, this, this Wrangler tote bag. Most of it is due to their what they have in front of them with D2C and International. Also, guys, they have had tremendous issues this last year with supply chain. Tremendous issues. Inflation has crushed this company this last year. They've already come out and said that the back half of this year, this quarter, but especially Q4, that is all reversing. In fact, the cost of cotton, the cost of cotton to, to, to make all the denim, it's like 65% of what these guys do is denim, 
has been sky high the last year. It is now coming way down. Denim costs, which has been a, um, what's the opposite of tailwind? Headwind. Headwind. It's been a headwind for the past year. <laughs> they said it's going to become a tailwind in Q4 because the cost has come down so much. So I look at this company, it's getting beat up a little bit because all the retailers are getting beat up. All the brands are getting beat up because where everybody is like afraid of this recession, right? But Jordan, yeah, you no, said so it. This is what I was talking about earlier. Walmart. I actually really like this brand in the recession. So first of all, it's inexpensive, right? So it's like a nine, nine forward PE. It pays you like 4% dividend um, just to sit in the stock. And they're they're priced for recessions so that um, you know as as consumers trade down um, as they're shopping in Walmart instead of some other other places that um, Lee and Wrangler tend to I would think would tend to do well um, and that's and, and I agree with you about e-commerce because that's one thing that I noticed when I was starting to look at these two companies is that they're actually starting to do a good job on their websites uh, marketing um, and create a good um, shopping experience online. By the way, can I just tell everyone the winner of that Twitter contest, which I was stunned. It got like almost 100,000 views. A couple hundred people took guesses. And we should, in a minute, Dave, We should. I, I made a list of what I believe are the most interesting guesses that are all trending products. Um, some of these are potential investments, guys, so you need to listen. But I just want to say that Arthur from Poland um, on Twitter was our winner. And I've reached out to him to buy him a Wrangler tote bag. Also, Meatloaf from our Dumb Money Discord community, our free community, where they went deep on this trade. Guys, if you want to get other people's perspective on contour brands, go right now, log into dumbmoney.tv forward slash discord, totally free. The research, the stocks research and trade channel, there's a lot of conversation um, by the way, one of the negatives on this trade is the debt that is variable interest. Yeah, so this uh, is this is the downside of the company, and so this is this is where you have to know the company's history. So VF Corp spun off Contour Brands, and I think somewhere around 2018, um, and basically just straddled the company with debt, right? And so they just they wanted out of the jeans business. They wanted to stay kind of in their lane, and so this was the big this big spinoff where they could unload a bunch of debt, right? And so that's kind of, that's the downside with Contour Brands. You, you know what's ironic about that though, Jordan? Contour Brands has done way better than VF Corp since the spinoff. Right? Yeah. They, they yeah, thought the, the they were jumping this. Sure. Yeah. They didn't know about Coastal Cowgirl, right? right. That that would be coming up. <laughs> they didn't know about the revival of country, um, so it's it's fascinating to me, but they do have a lot of debt. They have like I don't know four five four hundred million right in debt, but uh, and it is going to impact their earnings somewhat. But I think our community did the analysis, and it was like a few million bucks on their earnings. And this is a company that I think is going to earn a couple hundred million bucks. So it's not it's not going to like be catastrophic at all. And they're profitable enough that they could pay off this debt in the next few years anyway with their earnings alone. As you said, Jordan, they have a really nice dividend. It's, if you think about it, this is like a stock for you. I, I thought you would get excited about this one, Jordan. Like, Yeah, so I mean, but look, you know, they're, they're kind of propping up the, the dividend with debt. And so, I mean, you know, is that how sustainable is that? I don't know. But, you know, we'll have to, time will tell on that. Um, but what I do like about it is, you know, the, that the product is priced for, the current consumer and the current consumer's pocketbook. And Jordan, do you think there uh, there is a political... Listen, look at politics. Do you think that the country folk in this country are kind of doubling down on country right now? I mean, music is... Did you say country culture. folk? By the way, um, <laughs> you know, the, Lee at least is um, kind of trying to modernize some of their styles. So they're not going after country folk, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> Are are you a country folk, Jordan? Would you consider uh, yourself? I I no no. I wear basketball shorts and a t shirt every day. <laughs> you went to an agriculture school. I did. I went to Texas A and M. Yeah, yeah. But I did not study agriculture. <laughs> <laughs> you wear boots. You used to wear boots. Constantly. I have two pair of cowboy boots for sure that I probably haven't worn now in a decade. <laughs> 
Um, I, I only have one pair of cowboy boots, and that's the one that I wear to that country and western charity event every oh, year. Oh yeah, to the Cattle Barons Ball. Yeah. See what uh, I, I, I haven't been. I go to the rodeo every year, but I wear my, I wear Toms. So I, I had some uh, custom made uh, Converse that are leather with uh, the Hanson brand on the side. I think, I think you've told me that. That's awesome. So that's what I now wear to any. Uh, boots are not for me, but custom Connies with an emblazoned logo on the side. That's awesome. Guys, we have to talk about some of these. Do you want, Dave, how do you want me to do? Do you want me to rattle them off? Because I have my rattle them off. I don't know which ones you've picked. Oh, okay. So these are the products and brands that are trending really hard right now that if you're paying attention and watching TikTok and doing your homework like we tell you to, you see this stuff in real time as it's happening. And some of these brands and products that are trending have the potential to maybe be great investments. Uh, let me just rattle them off. And this is all coming off that Twitter thread. Some of these you'll recognize. Some of them you definitely won't. Um, Stanley Cups, we all know that's been hot for a while. But Genco Jeans, a jean company out of Los Angeles, okay, JNCO, is really, really hot right now. Um, they are trending hard. Problem is, they're a private company. To my knowledge, no way to invest. Stanley Cups, we've researched it. Really no way to invest. Um, here's one of my favorites. Bibligo. Bib. I can't make this. Bibligo. Uh, <laughs> frozen Korean style dumplings. So Bibby Joe. No, Bibby Joe frozen Korean style dumplings. They are selling out at Walmart, at Costco. At Target, this brand is so hot. This is a huge company out of Korea, and I'm so wait, this, dying it's, it's to invest frozen, in them. Dying. It's a frozen dumpling product, like a bag of dumplings that you heat up at home, or is it a new dumpling that you eat frozen? It's a it's stick? a frozen dumpling that you just heat up at, at home. It's super okay. easy. It went viral on TikTok. Everybody's talking about this dumpling, Dave. And I, I haven't tried it yet myself, but I will. It's a Korean-style dumpling. It is huge. The problem is it is a publicly traded company, but only on the Korean exchange. Yeah. And it's like a legal or something for Americans to invest in any company on the Korean exchange. It, yeah, like, I, don't, I don't think that Schwab, any... I don't know about that. I don't think yeah, any Charles brokerages... Schwab International. I have a global account, and they yeah. won't let me invest in this and other people are saying the same thing it kills me to see a company that's popping that hard that i physically they don't, cannot they don't have an adr or any any way to trade it here nope no i spent hmm. two days last week researching that trade well what a Cannot waste of two it. days that was how do, how do you spend like, when you say things like that how do you literally spend two entire days well, doing i mean something? listen <laughs> you, look, I, that all that means is I took like an hour, hour and a half each of the two days to like try to figure it out, and I couldn't figure it out. Like when I was having coffee with my dog, you know, I, 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 or when I was doing my late night research. But there's more. There's more. The Vegas Sphere. We all know about yes. that. That. The and by sphere? the way, I saw I saw some video. The sphere or the sphere. Sphere. <laughs> you know, I I did go to um speech class when i was a kid and i think i still can't pronounce some things but sphere is that right sphere yes. um i did see a video yesterday from the inside of this yes sphere. i did too yeah that that clip is going viral that was it a dinosaur clip where they were like doing they were testing out the sound system and like the engineers were in no. there no it was a clip of rockets like rockets taking off and you're just like on a planet and there's like it was wild i i, I Dave, I have tickets. You should go to Vegas with us for New Year's, Dave. We're going for two nights only. We're going to the Sphere on uh, the, on I think January first, but like we'll do a concert New Year's Eve in Vegas. It's always I a great trip. You yeah. should think about doing that, uh, Jordan. I'd invite you, but I know I know you're not going to do Vegas. What's in Vegas? Yeah, you should consider it though. Vegas you're is not. my least favorite place, maybe on the planet. Uh, yeah, family vacation, New Year's, it's the greatest. I promise you, it is such a good family vacation. It is the greatest. And uh, we're doing the spear, too. Um, so, I wanted so, to bring one up that, that I had yeah. been thinking about, and that is the Creamy by uh, Shark Ninja. They finally went, they finally are public on 
um, you know, in, in United States markets, but it looks like search traffic for the creamy is backing off. Um, so we did not have a chance to say. invest while it was taking off. Now that they're out there, not viral anymore. So yeah, we were. You were talking about that. You were on top of that one. But well, there were. Really... I mean, there were TikToks out the. You know, I, I just saw a ton of TikToks about people talking about this. Well, it looks like Shark Ninja, Ninja creamer, stopped. They they, they, they like... IPO'd and then dropped, but they're right back to where they were. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's expensive. It's a 25 PE. It's um, and, and the search traffic for Creamy is, is backed off. So I don't know if that trend is still as hot as it once had been. I'm not interested, Jordan, with the cert drop off in search traffic. No, that's what I'm saying. So that was a, you know, that's a, that's a dead end. Um, a couple here that I don't think there's any way to invest in is creatine gummies. Creatine, for those of you all know, it like makes mm -hmm. everyone's taking it to get like more big. It adds water weight, basically, but it allows you get your muscles to grow. Uh, mushroom gummies. Also, mushroom coffee is really big. Uh, oh, <laughs> well, I have another one I'm going to save for the end. Guys, you got to stay to the end of this episode because I have another one that went super viral on TikTok. But, but let's go. Matcha coffee is actually i thought matcha was like not as big anymore but it's the search trends continue to grow it's accelerating it's wild um you know what's going really nuts right now is freeze dried candy i researched that a year ago when it was trending it's trending even harder today than it was a year ago you're talking about like dipping dots no freeze dried candy like so they space candy they take candy, all kinds of different candy. They freeze dry it, and then it like it went viral on TikTok. Mm -hmm. I guess it's still going viral on TikTok, and it like crackles, and it totally changes the texture and the composition of candy. So like when it first went viral, I tried to go buy some for my daughter, but it was really hard to find. I would assume that they're probably productizing it more now so perhaps there is an investment there i haven't researched it again this is stuff for you guys that are watching the show today just to like listen to and see if you could connect the dots to an investable opportunity um this looks so homemade is is this well the um... thing is david was homemade and i'm kind of shocked that a candy if a candy maker hasn't like taken the reins and like monetized this trend because it's a monster trend so I don't know. Someone's saying Skittles is doing it. <laughs> Freeze dried Skittles. I don't know. Uh, well, while you're doing that, Dave, I want to talk about one of my favorites. <laughs> Blenders sunglasses, dude. I am all yes. in on Deion Sanders and the University of Colorado football. This has been the most exciting college football season I have seen in my life. Dion is a genius in every way. Uh, he has mastered social media. By the way, that's a company that you can tech. I'm not going to invest, but you can invest in them. There's a company that, it, that trades on the European exchange that acquired this 60% of it in 2019. Okay. I know nothing about the company, but you can, if you want to invest in these guys, <laughs> they sold. $1.3 million in one day this weekend when Dion gave it out to every player on his team after the other coach of Colorado State made fun of Dion for wearing sunglasses and a hat in his interview with the press saying that his mama should have taught him better and Dion used that as leverage <laughs> to hype up his right. team and his sunglass brand. The world has voted and they are voting for Dion Sanders. They love him. I'm voting for Deion I, Sanders. I, love him. Man. I think it's great. I think it's fantastic. I don't. I don't think they're going to win. And I don't think they're, they'll be a top five or top no, fifteen. I don't no, think they'll make the playoffs. But they're creating some excitement in that program, um, and they're getting players on board with a different style of coach. I, I think it's a great situation. All right, save this quote. I think that next football season, 2024, 2025. Dion and the University of Colorado make the playoffs. That is a bold prediction. I think it's going to happen next year. I think the recruiting class is going to be insane, but no more football. Uh, yeah, we, we, this finance <laughs> channel just totally turned into sports chat. 
sports chat. That's a real, that's a that's a real trend, man. Anyway, uh, we have next Shadow Work Journal. I googled it, but I don't really understand. What, it's just like a work. It's just like a journal. It's like some new form of journaling. There's no way to invest in it, so I'm like out. But um, Snail Moosen, Snail Moosen is. <laughs> is made by a company called COSRX, which is way too diversified to make money off of this. But Snail Moosin is a new type of skincare that has your skin glowing, supposedly. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that's a new thing. Uh, Jordan, you're going to be shocked by this one. You remember when you had that on Crustables thesis a year or two ago? Do you yeah, know that on yeah, Crustables? Yeah, with, with, the, with Smuckers, yeah. Do you know Uncrustables is actually trending harder today than it ever has? Uh, is like it it's really? still on the uh, yeah, up, up, up. Now Smuckers is doing really bad, and I don't know why the stock is down big right now. I think well, um, yeah, all of the all of the staples companies are doing bad because they had done so well in twenty two. But I saw that smuck I saw that Uncrustables like comment and i looked at the search chart and i was like wow the same week that my entire fridge for some odd reason is full with uncrustables more than it ever has been and i think we have these chocolate uncrustables i don't know if that's a new thing i've never seen them before in our house and and we have them now so maybe maybe they're doing a more better job okay, with so we've the, got a yeah, comment smuckers bought hostess um so maybe that, the might market, be, that might be that big drop, uh, yeah. you know, the beginning of September. That definitely could be it. Um, so there's a couple others. This one I love, Dave. Someone said dumb money movie was the chart, the search trend chart. <laughs> now that's a good one, actually. Are we doing that episode tomorrow or no? Are we still doing yeah, we it? Should. We okay, should. Okay, so we're we all dumb saw money the refutes dumb money. Dumb money? We saw the Dumb Money movie. Did you see it, Dave? Uh, I did. Nice. I can't tell you okay. what I thought because we're going to no. do that tomorrow. Tomorrow, we are going to go I maybe... deep. Deep on our Dumb Money movie review. Dumb Money reviews Dumb Money tomorrow. Um, but on that note, we are in the movie. We are in the movie. And Good. I tried Congrats, to Congrats, guys, it. by the way. It's our, our, our motion picture debut. <laughs> All three of us are in there. It, it's all of two seconds. You have to look just at the right time during a montage. And uh, the at the side perfect of the side of the screen. But I think it's about half of the screen. I was very yes. impressed with how much screen real estate we got. For... It's up to half the screen. Also, Kayla, Robin Hood kid, a friend of the channel who we've had on Dumb Money many times. She, she has a multiple speaking times. part. That's right. Yeah, she, yeah, you hear her voice. It's great. Congrats, Kayla. Um... But we'll talk about that tomorrow. If anyone can seize the movie, we are about one hour and three and a half minutes into the movie. If you would please videotape that and send it to us, it would be very don't much Don't get kicked out of the theater. <laughs> Just very, very uh, subtly. You don't want to catch any charges. Yeah, and I, you're, you're, I don't know when the, if your time is off because, you know, the trailers are different links at different theaters. No, tra um, no, Dave, no trailer. This is the one from the start of the actual movie. The movie? In at one hour, three minutes and a half, roughly. Um, okay, I have a question. Th th this one's going to ruin the up. movie for somebody. They're going to be sitting watching their watch the whole time, wondering when they have to film this for us. Um, by the way, we did not buy GME. No, I, I do not think the movie is like, uh, I no longer think that this movie is going to be an accelerator for the GME trade. We did not buy it. Uh, we thought that could be a possibility when we did our last episode on the film, but no. Um, okay, guys, for the last trend that somebody mentioned in their guess, uh, I'm just going to ask it as a question. Uh, how often do you guys... And I, you know, you've seen oh. this a thousand times you're watching TikTok. How often do you guys think about the Roman Empire? Because someone said it was Roman Empire. And this is a conversation that my wife asked me this week. She asked me, I think, on Saturday night. And I was like, I was waiting to see if you would ask me. Because when I first saw this trend on TikTok, the first thing that popped in my head was, damn, 
because I actually think about it about every month and a half. And I thought that was psychotic. I thought like thinking about the Roman Empire every six weeks, I thought was insane. And most of the guys on TikTok are like twice a week, once a day. I don't know if I believe that. Yeah. But what are you guys? First of all, first of all, this trend makes zero sense because the only time I ever think about the Roman Empire is if I'm in Rome or traveling in parts of Europe where the Roman Empire has a wall fragment or something like. But then, I, then I get to thinking, it's it's really I only think about it when social media pops something up, like. I'm fascinated by their waterwork system, right? And so I do get random video clips explaining how the aqueducts worked. And it was, when Megan asked me, I said three, three times a week. But I, I just said that because that's not, that's the first thing that came to mind. It's actually zero times per week on average. But when I get shown something about the Roman Empire, I am going to read it. I am going to watch it, but I don't seek it out. But I think about the Roman Empire exclusively in parallel to the current state of our world. Uh, and I have conversations with people all the time about where are we relative to the Roman Empire in terms of our civilization imploding. I think that's the most common yeah. reason mm -hmm. people, guys, are constantly thinking. Because, like, we are all about survival. Guys' minds are pre-wired for survival. So we're constantly thinking about, oh, is the world going to implode next month or next year? And how do I plan for that to ensure my survivability? And then our mind immediately goes to the Roman Empire. So, like, that's why I'm thinking about it. Jordan, how about you? Uh, so I'm, I'm a weird history buff. So I'm, like, always listening to different podcasts or reading books or, you know. So I feel like that's a topic that comes up regularly i wouldn't say that i'm sitting around you know just thinking about the roman empire ever um but if it's in relation to some subject that i'm studying or you know um you know uh, just some book that i'm reading then yeah you know it's in it's in my mind you know whenever you know whenever i'm reading about a topic that relates to the roman empire which is i'd say regularly but i'm i'm not independently just thinking about the roman empire ever um, all right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do, do you know what the, do you know what the counter, uh, trend is for women that? Yeah. Uh, it's what, it, what is the Roman empire of? Yeah. I've seen the whole thing on TikTok. It's gone nuts, but is there anything, is there any way to invest based on this? Yeah. Well, hold on before. No, the counter one for women counter? is how often do you think about your ex best, best friend? friend? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, that is so true, right? For every woman, they all have an ex best friend and they're just sad about it and they miss that person. And it's like, it's it's every woman I've ever met. <laughs> it's just, I love TikTok for this stuff. I, it, it, it just shows that it shows how we're really all interconnected in so many ways. And so many of us are just on the same journey, on the same plane. Um, and we never realized that before. And it's, I think in many ways, TikTok is just such a positive force on culture and an otherwise very negative world these days, these last few years. Um, but I, I, I love that stuff. Can you trade on it, Jordan? I, I was thinking about that. Like, I actually don't know. Like, I do think, I actually think, that it's not like Italy was having a tourism issue to begin with. This is like the biggest travel season Italy has yeah. ever had this summer. Right. But this has to only help. Because you remember when everyone was talking about, was it, I don't know what it was. It was some other place that went viral on TikTok. And then you couldn't buy tickets there for like three years. Hmm. If we're all talking about the Roman Empire, just having that in the back of our head now as a conversation, when you talk about your next big international trip, it's going to come up because even the female in the relationship is going to be like, well, I know you like the Roman empire. Should we visit Rome? Should we visit Italy? Right? Like, but I don't know that how investable that is necessarily. Yeah. It might be. I don't know. It's not investable other than I, that, that's, that's a macro travel trend. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's it, yeah, unless there was yeah. like one tour company that had the exclusive on some specific part of the Roman empire that you can't do it. Um, 
I, I agree, but it's still good to go through the mental exercise because being a great social arbitrator is all about surfacing, just like we did today in this episode, lots and lots and lots and lots of trends, lots of things that are changing in the world, culture, consumer behavior. It's a huge top of the funnel. And as you go down the funnel, you find out that very few of those things are investable. And even if they are investable, they're probably not going to move the needle and even if they do move the needle, more likely than not, the world probably is already fully aware of that thing that you discovered and has already kind of, it already has impacted that stock. Uh, but occasionally something falls out of the bottom of the funnel that is investable, that will move the needle, that other people really haven't fully caught on to yet. And that's where our best high conviction social arb trades come from. So it's a grueling process. And we saw it happened in a, real time on twitter through this post that it was so cool it's a like, great it's thought easy. exercise though when you just are mindlessly scrolling on tiktok you should be using another part of your brain to say could i invest in that okay and now i've seen three videos on the same thing can i invest in that and it's and it works on reels it works on all of the all of the mindless scrolling platforms use your mind it's a way to make money you can get you can get paid Watching TikTok, like th this is, th we have been paid for many years watching TikTok, watching Instagram, paying attention on Twitter. We're not financial advisors, but this is how we've made our money. Um, this is how we trade. You're free to poke holes in our thesis. Um, you know, figure out your own methodology, figure out your own spin on social ARB, do your own homework. Uh, your risk tolerance is very different from ours. So please don't take this as financial advice. And, and when um, we started doing this, we didn't have tools like mindless scrolling TikToks and reels feeds to just, just go through. We had to we had to like watch late night talk shows to see trending things that might go viral. Is there a way, Dave, for me to go back and view the com the live comments from this episode because there's a bunch of stuff in here that people are saying that I want to like start to research. Uh, yeah, you should be able to watch them. Uh, yeah, as, as you watch the, the as replay. you watch it again, they should come through. I'll make sure that it's set to save them yeah. if I can before we uh, sign off. That way, because okay. sometimes they disappear because there's a setting called don't you know like replay and sync or something. I don't I don't know what it's called. But I'm gonna see if I can go into settings and fix that right now. Cool, um, guys. For those of y'all that are watching, you know, please uh, all subscribe to our Instagram, our Twitter. Um, we're putting our short clips on there as well as our TikTok, guys. TikTok, dude, we had a video. It's hitting three hundred thousand views on TikTok. That's a big deal for us. Um, wow. I love, I love that so many new people are finding us through TikTok. Uh, because I just spend a lot of time on there and it's nice to have our channel actually pop in in a totally new way with new people. So if you're on TikTok, you can follow us. There. What is it, Dumb Money TV, Dave, or Dumb Money Live on TikTok? Uh, that's a good question. If you go to dumbmoney.tv, that's a website that has a link to all of the, uh, uh, all of the right channels because we, we changed it at one point. It, what used to be Dumb Money TV and now I think it might be Dumb Money Live. So tomorrow we'll review the Dumb Money movie, and then if we can pull it off, uh, we're going to maybe do a triple this week and talk about the number one investment mistake that we will never, ever make again, and that will be on Thursday. So We have, we have a lot of shows. That, that isn't even all of the ones that we've been talking about doing. What? Yeah, we, ha we have actually some other really good social arbitro that shows. There's some research i have a lot of research to do guys we're working on trades guys the discord is honestly i'm so happy that the community is back in discord they're surfacing things i'm not even aware of doing research sharing intelligence that's what this is all about so i know i'll be back in discord this week you guys should both check it out too it's it's honestly like the insights are great um, and I'll get I'll get those Wrangler bags shipped off as soon as they're back in stock to the two winners. Um, thank you very much, guys. Hey, that might be the uh, the Arb opportunity is get the free bag from Chris and sell it on eBay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, I do have live chat replay turned on, so Chris, you can go back and watch the uh, watch the stream, and uh, we'll be in the comments down below. So uh, that's it.
Anything else? Awesome. No. All right. We'll oh, see you tomorrow. Woo! <laughs>